In this video we're going to make a start on the horn plates. So we've got two main horn plates for the driving wheels and another horn plate for the trailing wheels at the rear. These are attached to the frame which we made in an earlier uh, video. The drawing shows the horn plate attached to the outside of the frame with a horn cheek in place to make up the, uh, the space for the axle boxes. For a 5 inch gauge model these horn plates are shown at the 8th of an inch. The 1 16th of an inch on the drawing here is for the 3.5 inch gauge model. When you look at the actual engine in the Liverpool Museum it has a horn plate on each side of the frame with a uh, spacer in between. I'm going to proceed uh, replicating the full size engine with a horn plate on each side. I'm going to make them 1 16th of an inch thick. The frame for 5 inch gauge on the drawing is dimensioned at 3 quarters deep by 3 eighths wide. I think the proportion of the depth to the width is not quite right for the engine. I think it looks better if it's thinner. I think that's more in proportion to the full size engine. So previously I'd made this uh, frame 5 16 wide. And by the time we place the, another horn plate on the inside 1 16th wide we maintain the 3 eighths of an inch from the inside of this horn plate to the outside of this horn plate. So we don't need to change any other dimensions on the engine to accommodate for that. Also when you look at the spacer on the uh, full size engine you can see kind of a wave pattern there for location of the rivets that hold it in place. So again we'll replicate that and try to make it look similar. It's not going to be scaled but it's going to look similar. I'm going to proceed first of all by making the spacers and I'm using a piece of scrap cast iron which is an off cut from when I made the cylinder block which I'll show in a future video. Here I'm using the shaping machine to machine the faces parallel to a thickness of half an inch or 12.7 millimeters. Trimming off the excess material on the bandsaw. Off camera I'll put this back in the shaping machine to machine the sides uh, parallel to width. So that's it all finished up to size. I was aiming for half an inch thick which is 12.7. So straight off the shape by there it's 12.74. Uh, Twelve point seven six twelve point seven four twelve point seven three. So it's pretty good considering it's just done on a shaper in the vice. 
just about a thou and a half over size, pretty much parallel. Good enough. Unfortunately for some of this video I lost the audio. So I'll just play a little bit of background music while we talk through what's going on. This is my setup for machining the ends and sides of the spare sister size. Machining the end flat. Machining the sides. Now it's under the CNC mill to profile the wave like uh, shape. I'll not bore you with lots of CNC clips, I'll show a few just to give you the idea. Profiling the final shape of the flange portion on the linisher. Just doing this by eyeball, it's not critical, just making it look right. Onto the bandsaw to cut off the first of the 12 spaces. So what I'm doing now is just facing off this face here so that this flange is one millimeter thick. So I'm using my tool maker's vise to make sure this goes down flat on the top of the vise I've actually stoned the corner of my, my vise to take off the sharp edge otherwise it may have prevented the, the component going down flat and then I would get inconsistencies between each one and the thickness of the flange. I set the height of the cutter just using feeler gauges. So that's them all machined up now. So the longer ones are for the main axle and the forward axle. 
and the shorter ones are for the trailing axle so I'm just going to clean up the faces with some wet and dry so I just use a, a ground up parallel kind of as my surface plate if you like a little bit of WD-40 So I'm not going to try and completely eliminate all the machining marks, I'm just going to clean up, flatten it out and get it smooth. So this is 320 wet and dry. I think that's good enough to take away the imperfections. So it's just a case of giving these a little file up, take the sharp edges off. So I've made them with uh, one flange on one side, obviously it should have a flange on the other side as well. So what I could do is I could uh, make up a plate to put on this side. So when I go in the horn plates it's sandwiched in there. However, when you look at the photograph of the actual engine, you would only ever see the flange on one side. So I'm just going to leave it like that. So I'll put this flange on the side that will be seen by the viewer and no one will ever know that the, the flange on the other side is actually missing. So just don't tell anybody, it'll never be any of the wiser. So that's how we're going to proceed. If you enjoy this series of videos please subscribe, it helps the channel quite a lot. And thanks for watching.